Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you have joined us today. Today, we're going to share 10 essential things that you would need for a successful no or low spend month. We're going to be kicking our no spend month off in January, and we're hoping you're going to join us. And today we're just going to give you 10 things that you should start implementing and doing to make sure this is a successful and lucrative no spend month. A lot of the time we get asked, why are you doing it in January? There are so many great sales going on. Why January? And I want to reiterate the fact that to do a low or no spend month, you have to distinguish between wants and needs. A lot of the things that go on sale are things like winter jackets, Christmas supplies, holiday supplies, and we don't need any of those things right now. Every month has its own great deals, so it's really up to you when you do your no spend month. But again, also coming off the excess of December because December is a spend month for us. We have holiday food, we have holiday gifts, and we all keep it within budget and within reason, but there still are some extra spends here and there. So going into January to start the new year on a low spend mindset and just to ease into the new year on a positive note with a more structured budget is always a good thing. So that's why we picked January. So now let's get into these 10 things that will help you have a successful no spend, low spend January. The first item that we are going to suggest you have or put together is some place that you can write things down, like a control center. I use a journal, but you can use a notebook. You can take a bunch of pieces of paper and staple them together. You can use your phone. This little control center is going to be something that you're going to revisit over and over throughout the month. And what is going to be in your control center? You're going to keep meal plans in there so you can refer back to it time and time again to be inspired, to see what you made, to think ahead and think what you're going to make with what you have already. It's going to be your expense tracker. You can print an actual expense tracker out and stick it in your control journal, or you can just use a page in a notebook and write down how much you're spending and what you're spending on. Because what a great habit to start in January is to track every bit of your spending. So you know where your money is going. And if it's not going to places that you want it to go, then you can redirect it. You're gonna keep your appointments in there, things you have to do. So you'll know if you're going to be out all day and you're gonna be tempted to go through the drive-through, bring a cooler with some sandwiches in it, or if you're gonna be out in the afternoon and you get hungry then, pack a little cooler with some snacks and water. Always be prepared. What else is gonna go in there? Our boredom busters. That's something we'll get to in a minute, but there's going to be a page of boredom busters in your control journal. You're also going to wanna to keep your inventory of your freezer, fridge, and pantry in your control journal so you can refer back to that. Now these can be individual sheets, like I said, or a page in your journal, on your phone, whatever works. But we're gonna be going back to that control journal through the entire month of January. Number two, organize. You're going to wanna to organize your pantry and your cabinets. Have all items that are alike grouped together. Put your pastas together. Put your canned goods together. This way, when you take your inventories or when you meal plan, you're going to know exactly what's there. You're not gonna have to move pasta to get to the cans. You're not gonna have to move cans to get to your grains, your rice, your barley, whatever it may be. And also remember to organize by date what you need to use first in the front. Number three, 
when you do your meal plans, you're going to want to plan your meals around what you already have in the home. So that little bit of extra meatballs from the other night, well, they can go into a soup or you can pair them with pasta or noodles and make a cream sauce. Before you make that shopping list to head out, plan to use what you already have in the home. Now, I'm not talking about depleting your pantry. You don't ever want to be without food. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about using up those leftovers and incorporating your meal plan with what you already have. Number four is a library card. If you don't have a library card, I beg you to go and get yourself one. That library card is going to be your passport to fun for the month of January and hopefully months and months to come. Books, DVDs, entertainment. We have little concerts at our library. We have book clubs. There are sewing clubs and knitting clubs. So many wonderful things at the library. And there are even free passes at your library that you can get museum passes for absolutely free. Number five, go through your books and go through your DVDs. Find out what you haven't watched in a while, what you want to watch. And these ideas are all going into your boredom buster page in your control journal. You're going to put down, I want to read, well, I'll show you what I want to read. Heart of the Home by Susan Branch. One of my sweet viewers sent me this cookbook and it's got stories and all kinds of wonderful things in it. So I put this down in my boredom buster because if I feel like, oh, I don't know what to do with myself, which that doesn't happen often with me, I know that this is on my list and I want to read it. The same thing with DVDs. If there's movies you want to watch and you own them, this is the month to pull them out. If you don't own them, then put them on reserve at your library. The library will get you whatever books you're interested in, whatever DVDs you're interested in. There's interlibrary loan throughout your area and they can get these resources for you from other libraries. So put the books and the DVDs you want to read or watch on your Boredom Buster page. Number six, gather some board games or craft supplies that you know that you're going to want to revisit come January. Have them close by. Put them on your Boredom Buster page. I'm going to show you two things that I want to do come January. So let me show you those right now. This is one of the games that I want to revisit. I'm going to make Paul play this with me. Disney Uno. Somebody gave this to me years ago and we were cleaning out a closet and I found it and I am so excited. You know how I love my Disney. And this is another item. This is the Avian Friends Activity Journal. I found it for 10 cents at a flea market back in the fall. Little pictures that you can color. Look at these. It's journaling. I'm so excited to start this. I knew January was coming and this will be perfect to get me through to spring. And I use my Prisma colored pencils to color it and journal. So for 10 cents, this was such a great find. Number seven, make sure you have some convenience foods in your home. And you know, I don't say that, but for the month of January, when you need something quick and you need something fast, you're going to have to have those items in your home. I am not talking about going out and buying 16 frozen pizzas and sticking them in your freezer. That would totally negate what we're doing. But have a frozen pizza if you see one on sale. Put it in your freezer. Some box macaroni and cheese if you eat that. Put a box in your pantry. Some canned soups if you eat them. Put them in your pantry. What we're trying to do is be ready when hunger strikes and we don't feel like cooking or dinner time rolls around or lunchtime and we're just like, I just don't feel like cooking. Let's get in the car and go get some drive through. Nope, nope, nope. You're covered. You've got a bag of frozen ravioli. Just one or two items when you really don't feel like cooking hits and you will be prepared. Number eight. Create a pamper palace. 
what is a pamper palace? Well, it's going to be a little corner of your bedroom, your living room, your study, whatever it may be that has a special chair, a corner of the sofa where you can go and just pamper yourself. Have a hot, cozy drink. I love tea. I always have a supply of tea in the house. Paul loves coffee. We always have coffee in the house. Grab one of your books from your boredom buster. Curl up with a blanket in that corner. Maybe that corner can be used to paint your nails. Have a place where you can go and decompress. Instead of spending money, your little pamper palace is going to be your little oasis where you can just go and have some downtime, some me time, some relaxation. Number nine, you're going to need some determination. Determination for the next week or two. Don't go out on a spending spree between now and January 1st if you're doing the no spend month and just spend. Don't do that please. That is totally the exact opposite of what we're to do. And also come February 1st, you're going to need that determination to not go on a spending spree, to not say, well, I've been good for a month. Now I'm going to go out and spend. No, no, no. That is not what this is about. We're going to need that determination to stick with what an actual no spend, low spend is. And number 10, what you're also going to need is a great, positive, thankful attitude. You're going to look around your house every day at all the stuff you already have and tell yourself, I do not need more. And hopefully that month of being grateful, seeing what we have, will carry over throughout the rest of the year, and it will also allow you to save for what is really important to you, to save for what you wanna save, even if it's just to put the money away to have a cushion. Now remember, a no spend, low spend month does not mean we skip on essentials. No, essential spending continues through the month of no spend, low spend. So all bills are paid, all doctor visits, all medication, food, necessary items are not part of a no spend. You buy those things you need. Don't confuse no spend with I'm not paying my bills or I'm not gonna buy any extra food or that's not what it's about. So we hope these 10 concrete ideas, tips, things will really encourage you because literally we're going to be starting this in two weeks. So we thank you for taking this time to be with us. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up. It will help us so much. Leave us a comment down below. What are you excited about for this low spend, no spend month? And we ask that you subscribe if you haven't. We would love for you to join us on our frugal journey. We ask that you be well. We ask that you be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, which will be Friday, may God bless you greatly.